Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing some information on that die storage wall behind me. I've gotten a few questions on it recently so I wanted to stop by to talk a little bit about it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Since I have started showing a little bit of my craft area and my face on camera, I've had quite a few of you ask me about my die storage that you see behind me in the intro. I thought I would stop by and tell you how I made that, give you some resources and some of my thoughts on the storage. So a couple years I shared a video with you, I will pop a little bit of it up here on screen now so you can see it, with how I started out my die wall. I actually got three of the magnet sheets that I'll be talking about later and I put them on pieces of foam board from Dollar Tree and then put them on the wall with command strips. This was a great economical way for me to get started, but I would say if I had to do it over again, I would probably go straight to what I have now because the foam board, it's almost like the top started to peel away from the foam and I would every once in a while have to get out some glue and stick it back together. Now it did work for me while I needed it, but I love to buy dies and so I outgrew my space. I even have too many dies for my current storage, but We'll kind of move past that. So, so on that wall, I mostly keep my word dies and my one-off shape dies. I have a couple nesting dies up there, but not too many sets. I actually keep those down lower. So here I'll show you kind of where I store stuff. Here on the top of my cabinet, I have out some of my newer stamp sets. Some of them are stamps with coordinating dies. And then you'll see on the right, is my paper pumpkin storage basket and I have actually talked about how I store those sets after I use them. I will link that video in the description box below if you want to go check it out. So in the top left square of my Ikea Calyx, I do store cards I have already made in some white boxes and then to the right of those you might notice some little black books. And here in front of me, I want to show you what is in those. Those are alphabet die sets that I have had for quite a while. Most of them are quick cuts or lifestyle crafts, if you remember those. And these books are actually magnetic. So this is very handy for my alphabets and this way it doesn't take up a lot of room on my board. In the top right square, I keep some of my thicker dies, like this Tim Holtz Alterations. And then I also have a little box of state dies. I have used these in the past to make customized state cards. And I have almost every state, I think. So I just keep these in there. These are old quick cuts. If you find them, you might want to snag it if you're interested because they are a little hard to find. And then finally, on the bottom right of the shelf in that opening, I keep all of my Spellbinders nesting dies, as well as some nesting dies from other companies, like the Art Impression Steel dies I used the other day. I just find that this works best for me because I kind of know what I have in these areas, but I was finding myself not remembering what dies I had that were just single shapes, and that's why I wanted to get those up on that board. So let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit. I did years ago try to find a magnetic board that was already made that I could just hang up. But I found that when the description said magnetic, it just meant that you could put a magnet on it because the board was metal. Well, I actually needed something that was just a huge magnet. They were available at the time, but I am pretty sure they were like hundreds of dollars and I wasn't going to pay that. If you can find something that's a reasonable price, you might want to give it a try. But I think for me, what I paid to create this one is perfect. That board in the background is a white dry erase board from Walmart. I got it last year at back to school time 
and I think it was only $20. So I, I'm not sure if that was some kind of special for back to school then because I try to look at walmart.com to see if this board was available and what it would cost now. I could only find a 24 by 36 for around $20 and the one that I bought and I actually bought it in person at the store is 36 by 48. So if you're um, around your Walmart or you do Walmart pickup if you're not wanting to go out, you could see if your local store has one this size and um, get it there. So after I brought that board home, I ordered six adhesive back magnet sheets from Amazon. Now these are the same magnetic sheets that I used on the foam boards. So it will be similar to that original die storage wall video that I shared, but I had to buy new ones. I tried to take the old ones off the foam board, but it wasn't going to work. So when you get these magnets, if you're going to think about purchasing them, they come rolled up and you don't want to force them to lay flat so what i did is i gradually over a couple days tried to open them up and flatten them um, i started out just you know barely opening it and then i would flatten it a little bit more and, and then for my final flattening i hung each of them on the side of my refrigerator for a while and that helped to flatten those out so they were all nice and flat when i went to put them on my board when they were ready i arranged them so the magnet sheets were going horizontal and I put two across the top, two across the middle and two across the bottom. So right now on Amazon, these magnet sheets are a little under $10 and that might change. Um, you know, the prices kind of fluctuate there. I will link the magnet sheets below that I bought if you want to check them out. They were 12 by 24 inches. So I'd say for $10, it was a pretty good deal. Again, I did have to buy six, so that was $60 and then $20 for the board. So for just around $80, I made probably my favorite die storage ever. It does take a little bit of fingernail sometimes to get the die off the wall. Sometimes they come off easily. Sometimes, you know, you have to try to pry it up, but it works great for me. I love to be able to look over and see what word I might have that would go nicely on a card or which shape would fit nicely on a card. And then again, I kind of know about these other dies, what is in storage kind of hidden away more. I do want to show you a close up of the board here where the magnet sheets meet. Now I could not get these to lay perfectly. Laying the magnets down, you do want to be careful because it is a pretty high tack adhesive. So you know, don't just try to lay it all down at once. You know, you want to slowly try to lay it across the board, but I did not get mine on there perfect. I did end up coloring in some of the white area between the two magnet sheets and that's what you're seeing here on screen. But when you're not right up on it, you don't even notice that. I bet you didn't notice that from my intro, did you? That's really all the information I have to share with you. I think I try to answer questions that I got. If you still have a question, you're probably not the only one. So make sure to leave that in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed my little informational video today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.